Run On Less is an industry event held every two years organized by the independent North American Council on Freight Efficiency. I went super deep, maybe too far down the rabbit hole last time. This year's event is called the Messy Middle, a term used for how we get from our current situation, moving freight by burning diesel, to the ultimate goal of zero emissions trucking. In between, there's going to be a messy hodgepodge of solutions, including biodiesel, natural gas, full battery electric, and maybe hydrogen fuel cell. I'd love to be proven wrong about hydrogen as a transportation fuel, but thus far my skepticism has been proven right. Here is a complete list of the participants, some basic stats from the first 11 days of their runs. This event is continuing, but I have enough data to geek out and share what I've learned. There are some different terms used in this industry, so forgive me if I use different terms than what you would use. Fun little graphic here I found online. By nature, I want to call these trucks a semi, but I think tractor is the better term, as in tractor pulling a trailer. These trucks are being used in different ways. Some run local routes. Here's an example of the Volvo VNR electric running back and forth between the port of Long Beach and a depot where it operates from. One of these Tesla semis also ran local routes in Northern California. A second Tesla semi run by Saya ran a regional route where they occasionally venture out on long trips, but always return back to their home base. So despite driving long distances, they never have to worry about finding charging along the way, and the drivers get to sleep in their own bed each night. But when many people think of tractors, semi-trucks, or 18-wheelers, they think long-haul trucking, also called OTR for over the road. This type of trucking travels over many different states. It requires the drivers to rest in their sleeper cabs. The Department of Transportation has rules for how many hours a truck driver can drive. OTR also requires the truck to refuel or recharge, as in the case with the Winrose truck. Of the four trucks running OTR routes, Windrose was the only alternative fuel truck. The other had aero efficiencies and other small enhancements, but still burned regular diesel fuel because biodiesel is not readily available on these long routes. And if biodiesel is hard to find out there, how hard do you think it's going to be to find EV charging for this thing? So let's start with the Windrose. Wow, ran routes between Las Vegas and deep into the heart of Texas. I did a deep dive into this truck at ACT Expo last year, so check out that video if you want to learn more. Here are the specs on this electric semi. The battery is the optional long-range 705 kilowatt hour pack using LFP chemistry, good for up to 420 miles of range. Interesting that the standard range battery is NMC, which is the more expensive chemistry, but should be cheaper due to its smaller size. The Windrose has charging ports on both sides using the CCS1 connector that gives it flexibility for how to position the truck when charging. Use one connector for up to 372 kilowatt peak charging or if you can find a suitable location to use both sides for up to 772 kilowatts. The truck can be ordered with the MCS connector on the left side for megawatt charging, but currently MCS is very rare to find in the US. Before I get deep into the data, I want to disclaim that there are inherent differences between the different trucks in operation and limitations to the data analysis. Run Unless worked with Geotab to pull data from all the participants and publish it on their website. However, each truck operated in different routes, pulling different weights over different terrains and traffic conditions, all of which will affect the efficiency numbers. For my analysis, I used the battery state of charge data to calculate how much energy was being used or put back into the truck when charging. To make this calculation, I assume the state of charge is accurate, and if you own an EV, you know how bad the guessometer can be. Published data is often vague as to whether the battery size is nominal or usable. Simply put, the analysis has limitations. It's not perfect, so keep that in mind. From the data provided, I calculated efficiency and charging speed. And for the Windrows, I want to start with charging, not because of the numbers, but because of the locations. The Geotab data indicates where the truck stops for short durations, long durations, and for charging events. 
From this, I wanted to know, where the hell is this thing charging out on the road? Windrose recently announced a partnership with EO Charging to deploy megawatt systems in California, Nevada, and Arizona, but I can find no information to say that any of those sites are up and running yet. This is their intention to build out a network. I reached out to EO Charging and Windrose, but did not receive a response. You know, no problem. We can just look on the map to see where the charging locations are and then see if there are any public or commercial charging locations near there. So where does Windrose charge? Most often at an Electrify America in a Walmart parking lot somewhere in the Southwest US. I shit you not. In the profile video, they do not show them charging. The pilot location in Arizona, I actually figured out what site that was. I called them and they said they have no EV charging on site. The guy who picked up the phone must think I'm crazy for asking. The best way to prove this is to look at some of these smaller towns where the windrows stopped to charge. Fort Stockton, Texas, you can see it on the map. It stopped to charge and its general location, you know, the, the map does not allow you to zoom in extra close. But if we go to PlugShare and filter on high powered CCS connector, these smaller towns, you don't have much to choose from. And in Stockton, it's only one, this Electrify America site. I was able to replicate the same location investigation at each of the stops. And here's what I found. This big rig is pulling into charging locations next to tiny little Chevy bolts and probably using the Walmart restroom, just like we all do. Whether they drop the trailer or just pull right in, I don't know. And if you know anybody living near one of these sites, and if they've seen it, comment in the notes. I'm confident that this is happening, but I've just not seen any pictures online of people showing images of a big truck at a small little EA station. With the disclaimer that charging rates are approximate, it averaged over 300 kilowatts for most of the sessions. 327 kilowatt average from 34 to 98 state of charge was the best that I observed. Considering that the EA hardware is rated at 350 kilowatts, that sounds actually pretty good. Efficiency of the windrows by my calculation averaged two kilowatt hours per mile. That's on par with the Tesla Semi's official claim of less than two. We'll compare it to the Tesla a little bit later in this video. And its best run, I calculated only 1.5, so a lower number is more efficient. But when you look at the data for that route, you can see that it's driving downhill for almost all of it. So that makes sense. Run Unless offered to have these operators report on the efficiency using that GeoTab telemetry. Their data on the windrows over the 11 days indicate a 1.9 kilowatt hour per mile. That's more efficient than my calculation. And as I stated before, if the battery usable capacity is less than the 705 kilowatt hour specified, or if the percent SOC is off a little, my results could easily be different, but they're pretty close. And let me remind you that this was the only alternative fuel tractor to run these long haul routes. The mere fact that it didn't get stranded somewhere given our lack of public infrastructure and close to no commercial trucking infrastructure is kind of a miracle. When I did the earlier view of the Windrose, they did not want me taking pictures of the sleeper cab part of it. They were using ACT Expo as kind of a market research event to understand the needs of US long haul truck drivers. What they showed is nowhere near as plush or as luxurious as other existing trucks, but it's usable. Windrose is facing headwinds in the US market since they are manufactured in China, but they are exploring other major markets around the world. <sighs> Talking about this one electric tractor took longer than I expected, and I still have three more trucks to tell you about, maybe four. So I'm going to break these overviews into different episodes. Liking or subscribing will help the next video find you. And in that next episode, I'll talk about the Tesla Semi and show you how its long runs from Stockton to Bakersfield and back again compared to the Windrows for efficiency and also reveal where that Tesla goes to recharge. That took some investigating too. I'll try to get that next video out real soon. Until then, thanks for watching.